and cheaper airfares could soon be coming to New York. First major new low-cost airline at one of New York's main airports. JetBlue. 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 When JetBlue first started, we got a lot of Jet Who. Jet Who, Jet Who, <laughs> and so, or Blue Jet. It was interesting because the impact we had on the industry was skepticism. Like, nobody thought we were going to be successful. Gordon Bethune is famously known for saying that we were all smoking weed. Nobody thought we could do this in New York. It's a very demanding market. New Yorkers were tough people. We have high standards, so you had to bring that customer service with the low fares. And we were the first airline ever to do that. And when people sat down in those nice leather seats with the legroom and the TV, things you had never seen before on, on any aircraft, I think they were blown away. Once customers started traveling on us, immediately it was like, I love this airline. This airline is so great, it's so easy. You know, when you say to somebody, I work at JetBlue, even to this day, in 2023, their first words are, oh, I love JetBlue. So you had low fares and nice people, all in the same place. So people took notice eventually. Everybody tried to do something to compete with JetBlue, but they couldn't. When you see other pilots step out of the cockpit to welcome customers, that's JetBlue. When you see other companies give you the entire can of soda, that's JetBlue. When you see free Wi-Fi, when you see low fares, that's all JetBlue. So I think we can all be very proud that the reaction of other carriers is flattering and doing what we did. Nobody said JetBlue would ever survive. Right? And now they're trying to copy us. Yeah, I think in the biggest sense, the JetBlue effect is how the industry has responded to what JetBlue has brought on the scene. Specifically, the JetBlue effect, as defined by MIT, is when JetBlue goes into a market that is dominated by legacy carriers, those carriers take note and they respond. They reduce their fares, they change their product offering, and we have countless examples of this across the years where JetBlue has come in and disrupted. It happens nearly everywhere we fly. We see this in leisure routes down in the Florida and the Caribbean. We see it on short haul business routes. We've entered places like LaGuardia to Boston and the JetBlue effect still holds and it really stimulates traffic. One of the best examples is recently we started flying to London last year with both our core and our phenomenal Mint experience. On the Mint side especially, we more or less dropped fares in half. The highest walk up fare dropped by 50% and it's a better experience than they had before. So when we come in with a lower fare and a better product, it forces the rest of the competition to step up. They'll often lower their price to match us because they need to compete for customers. And that just creates even more benefits for consumers. At the end of the day, competition is good. I think we can all say that. When you have companies competing for the same business, what that does is it drives prices down and it forces people to up their game. When you have a very small number of really large dominant carriers, they tend to control the market and they tend to control pricing and they control the experience. And so from our perspective, having a disruptor like JetBlue in the mix really forces carriers to say, we're gonna match JetBlue's fares, or we're gonna drive even lower fares, or we're gonna match the product and the service. So when you have large carriers, you need to have a level of network strength to compete with them. And JetBlue needs to be bigger to compete with those much bigger carriers. There are four carriers that dominate 80% of the market share. JetBlue wants to have the opportunity to more effectively compete with those legacy carriers. The most financially effective way that we believed we could do that was by purchasing Spirit. Because by purchasing Spirit, we get access to more Airbus airplanes, we get access to amazing team members, and we also get access to infrastructure in cities that tend to be very challenging to grow in. There are so many benefits that come with scale. You think of operations and the ability to recover more quickly by having a more geographically dispersed operation. If you're a legacy carrier with four or five X more aircraft than a JetBlue, you can come sit on part of our network, part of our revenue base and make things very difficult in a way that's not necessarily gonna be beneficial for customers going forward, but that can bring a lot of pain to JetBlue or other carriers in the short term. And those type of actions that the government hasn't necessarily focused on from a competition perspective, can be quite harmful. The Department of Justice has approved every merger before it. That same Department of Justice under this administration has taken an approach of maybe we went too far and we shouldn't approve anymore. And what we've said is 
you know, approving two high fare carriers getting together to keep fares even higher, remove hubs, remove competition, that might have been a mistake, but that's what you've done. What you need now is the combination of two low fare carriers that have that customer service to compete with them, that don't want to remove hubs, don't want to remove focus cities, want to grow them even further. That's a JetBlue brand that hires more, pays more, goes to more places. And the fact that maybe the Justice Department has buyer's remorse on all the many mergers they've approved before this, they created this landscape of 20% on average for four carriers. They need a viable competitor. That should be a very attractive proposition and a very different one to Justice than all the mergers before. We've admired what Spirit's done for many years. I mean, they're, they're focused on low fares too. They know how to make a little go a long way. I think they've done a really good job with things like biometrics. My job at JetBlue is to work every day to reduce the environmental impact of our operation. Spirit and JetBlue really are a really great match. When we think about our fleet, they are all Airbus, they are young, and they are fuel efficient, which is extremely important when we think about reducing the emissions associated with our travel. This is a very similar fleet in the sense that it's both the same aircraft and the same engine type. From a training perspective and from a just actual hard maintenance perspective, it's a much simpler transition and will allow us to much more quickly bring two different airlines together um, in a way that really does create synergies and creates long-term value. It's a combination of some of the areas they're big and we're not and think about in the Midwest or the West Coast. Um, Las Vegas is another market where they're very large. Some of the other airline hubs, the legacy hubs, places like Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, Detroit, um, they help us quickly get to a more reasonable size or fairly small in all those. I think that this was an opportunity specifically with what we're trying to do here to stimulate competition, which means we'll take the best of both companies and make a better, stronger, more formidable competitor to these entrenched legacy carriers. When we founded the airline, before we had the first plane, we had to come up with a, a set of rules, a mission statement. Of, and we decided very early on not to have a long wall drawn thing in the cafeteria that said, this is what we're all about. We just came up with five words, safety, caring, integrity, fun, and passion. Those are our values. And we wanted to be different, not just low fare, but great customer service. I think we continue that in everything we do. Take a look at London, take a look at Paris that's upcoming. These are markets where everybody charges high fares. And JetBlue has stayed true to itself and said, no, we're a low fare airline and a high quality airline. Look at the product. It is low fare and it's the best across the Atlantic. I think a disruptor understands what is and wants to do different. As a disruptor, we wanted to think differently and we did. I think in order to continue to be a disruptor, we have to continue to reinvent ourselves. You know, a larger JetBlue, what it'll mean to our crew members and to the team members of Spirit is opportunity. So you think about it, it's career opportunities. It's opportunities to give back to our community, which is a very important thing for our crew members. Give purpose to bringing what we're so proud of is the JetBlue experience to many more around the country that haven't experienced that yet. The large four airlines have so much power. What this does is this guarantees a fifth airline that has got a mission that's called Inspired Humanity, that's never furloughed a single person in our 23 year history, that while not perfect, has always focused on the customer, has been responsible for a large share of all the positive innovations that have happened in the US industry, and of course, made travel more affordable and saved people tens of billions of dollars over the year without low affairs. And so when you look at all of that, this is actually an unprecedented opportunity to make sure the airline industry stays more competitive for decades. We need an airline that's going to keep the large four airlines honest with their pricing and product, and that's what we're going to do as a larger JetBlue.